Right now at 6, a suspect in a lacrosse attempted homicide is bound over for trial. And today marks one year since the terror attacks that killed 1,200 people in Israel. You're watching WKDT Lacrosse. This is News 8 Now at 6. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us for News 8 Now at 6. I'm Ken Kozarowski. And I'm Emily Brown. Jury selection began today for the man accused of killing Winona mother, Madeline Kingsbury. That took place at the Blue Earth County Justice Center in Mankato this afternoon. Back in June, Adam Fravel's attorneys argued he would not get a fair trial in Winona County due to extensive media coverage. That motion was granted and the trial moved. Fravel is currently facing two charges of first degree murder. The man accused of trying to strangle a woman to death in a lacrosse storage unit is bound over for trial. 44-year-old Freeman Cole is facing several charges, including attempted first-degree homicide. In Lacrosse County Court this morning, a judge found probable cause for him to continue to trial. Cole has been refusing to leave his cell for court appearances, forcing correctional officers to place a tablet near his cell so he could hear the proceedings. His arraignment is scheduled for Friday at 10.30 a.m. A former Hudson School teacher accused of child sexual assault is bound over for trial. 24-year-old Madison Bergman is accused of having an inappropriate relationship with an 11-year-old in her class. The criminal complaint alludes to kissing, touching, and sexual contact with the victim. The student's parents discovered the child exchanging phone calls and messages with Bergman outside of school and brought some of those messages to the school officials. She was removed from school and arrested in May. Her arraignment is set for November 7th. One person is dead following a Jackson County car accident on Sunday. According to the sheriff's office, the crash happened around noon on County Road C in the town of Albion. Responders found two vehicles with significant damage when they arrived. One of the vehicles had multiple passengers. Several were injured and one was pronounced dead on scene. Names have not yet been released and the cause is still under investigation. Well, our temperatures were more typical of what you'd expect for early October after kind of a chilly start, but a lot of areas did get their first frost, which is kind of right on schedule. All in all, plenty of sunshine after the morning clouds came through. We've gotten up to the mid to upper 60s with a little breezy conditions with that northwest wind. We still have some frost or advisories later tonight here for some of the areas. Once again, this time of year, it's kind of where you would typically see that. So if you got plants outside, cover them or even bring them inside if you'd like them to survive more. And we'll still probably see more chillier nights ahead. But overall, there's your observed highs, mid to upper 60s. Even a few spots getting close to 70. Warmer out to the west gives you an idea that we might be warmer as we go throughout tomorrow. But this evening, very seasonable conditions getting back down to the 50. The winds will start to drop off, especially north of Eau Claire. That's where they've kind of been breezy this afternoon. West winds will start getting closer to just basically calm as we get to get to the upper 40s by 11 p.m. Now, overnight, maybe a few degrees warmer than we had last night, but still plenty of areas getting back into the 30s to around 40. Not that far from where we should be, but all in all, as we go through the big picture, all the activities well to the north, to the west, can need to this dry pattern. If you're wondering where uh, the hurricane is, there it is right now, Category 5, taking aim at Central Florida. Overall, leaf forecast right now, you see we're starting to get a little bit more color around here. Color to the north is actually starting to peak, so if you want to get out there and enjoy it, it's going to be a great way to see it. It looks like conditions for leaf viewing, it's going to be pretty nice going even to next week. So we'll break that down if we got any rain, which would have been fairly dry in the forecast here. All right. Thank you, Greg. Mm -hmm. A fire at a La Crescent assisted living facility displaced 17 people this weekend. News 8 Now's Allison Fergit joins us with the latest. Allison. Ken and Emily, La Crescent residents are rallying behind the residents of Traditions Assisted Living following a fire that left them without a home. Traditions of La Crescent residents forced to evacuate the building they called home after a structure fire broke out this past Saturday afternoon. Residents were temporarily moved into First Lutheran Church, but now all 17 residents are placed in local assisted living facilities. Thankfully, uh, individuals were able to find um, housing in the short term, so we did not have to open a shelter, which was an op op option that we were looking at at one point. The facilities residents have moved into include Springbrook Village in La Crescent and La Crosse's Riverside Transitional Care. 
In a statement sent to News 8 Now, leaders at Springbrook wrote, quote, We began accepting victims of the fire later that same night and have continued to work with families in assisting many of those needing shelter and care. It's unclear how long the residents will be at those facilities. The Red Cross says the aftermath of fires like this can be complicated since residents might need special medical care, but they have volunteers that make sure health care needs are met. When someone has a prescription that they need to take at a certain schedule or they have a medical device that is critical for them, those volunteers of ours um, can work with 24-hour pharmacies and other uh, community resources to make sure and fulfill those needs. Cheetah says finding them permanent housing can be especially challenging, but the Red Cross and other community groups will do all they can to help. We'll continue to you know, support as much as we can while they're evaluating their options and deciding you know, what they want to do. And speaking to La Crescent community members today, there's been an outpouring of support for those affected residents. Many people are donating clothing or finding other ways to help. The La Crescent Together Facebook page has more information about how to donate. Reporting in La Crescent, Allison Fergit, Ken and Emily, back to you. Allison, thanks very much. We did reach out to the La Crescent Fire Department. They say the cause of that fire remains under investigation. Well, today marks one year since the October 7th terror attack that killed 1,200 people in Israel. More than 200 people were taken captive, including 40 Americans. Since then, fighting in the Hamas-controlled territory has been raging with tens of thousands of Palestinians dead. This morning, Congressman Derek Van Orden spoke on the attacks and offered his sympathies to the Jewish community. This is the one-year anniversary of the, the most horrific attacks on the Jewish people since the Holocaust. So if you do have Jewish friends or relatives, give them a call today, please, and tell them that you're thinking about them. Tell them that you're doing everything you can to make sure that not only do they survive as a people, but they're able to thrive and live in peace. Senator Tammy Baldwin also released a statement commemorating the anniversary of the attacks, stating one year ago, the world witnessed Hamas brutally murder 1,200 Israelis, kidnap hundreds of others, and plunge the region into chaos. My heart is with all those mourning a loved one taken too soon, or those still lying up at night unsure if a family member kidnapped is alive or not. Three million dollars. That's how much money La Crosse's public library is getting for renovations. Governor Evers and the Wisconsin Department of Administration is announcing $115 million in ARPA grants to revitalize libraries and community centers statewide. La Crosse will be using its portion to expand the library with three additional classrooms, five meeting rooms, and two computer labs. The City of Independence also receiving a sum. They're bringing in just over $4 million to build a brand new community learning center and public library. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is asking boaters to give wildlife a rest at voluntary waterfowl avoidance. These areas on the Mississippi River are marked with orange and white buoys. The plants that grow in these areas are critical food sources for ducks. By keeping boats out of the refuge areas, it will provide a safe place for birds to rest, giving them a better chance to reach their winter habitat with enough body fat to survive. Yeah, stopping places here on the river are very similar for birds. It's kind of their, it's their rest area, it's their gas station, and, and they need that time to be able to rest and feed in order to have a successful migration, just like uh, we need gas stations to gas up our car. So. Now the areas will be marked October 15th through the end of duck season. A lacrosse homeless encampment is cleared out. More on the cleanup and what's next for the unhoused. We need real working people in Washington. What a phony. Cook spent the last decade working as a political operative. Earned her money helping defund the police radicals like Mandela Barnes, the most anti-police candidate in Wisconsin history. Now, Cook won't let you protect your family. She wants to ban the most popular rifle in the country, earning an F from the NRA. Rebecca Cook, phony insider, dangerously liberal. I'm Derek Van Orden, and I approve this message. Phones were made to help us connect, and somehow they've made us less connected. Which is ironic. Don't you think? We try to put our phones down, but we need to pick them up to see the menu. We can't watch something without also watching something else. Ironic. 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 But look, here's a phone company who wants you to use your phone less. That's ironic. Yeah, but in a good way. Let's find us again with us mode. U.S. Cellular, built for us. Traffic jam, Ugh. and I'm already late. Arthritis, high blood pressure, 
breast cancer. Almost everyone has a pre-existing condition and could lose health insurance if Derek Van Orden and Washington Insiders get their way. They take money from big insurance companies, then try to strip coverage for pre-existing conditions. Van Orden and Washington Insiders don't care about you, so if you get sick, you get dropped. Time to drop Derek Van Orden and these Washington Insiders from Congress. I'm Rebecca Cook, and I approve this message. He murdered a father of three, sentenced to life in prison. Kamala Harris pushed to use tax dollars to pay for his sex change. I made sure that they changed the policy so that every transgender inmate would have access. It sounds insane because it is insane. Kamala was the first to help pay for a prisoner's sex change. The power that I had, I used it in a way that was about pushing for the movement, frankly, and the agenda. Kamala's agenda is they, them, not you. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Your journey to wellness begins at Vernon Memorial Healthcare, where excellence in orthopedic care is a reality. From initial consultation to post-operative recovery, every step of the way is tailored to you. The numerous awards for orthopedic services are a testament to our entire team's skill and dedication. Your path to wellness is paved with our unwavering support and expertise. Trust us for a brighter, more active tomorrow. Vernon Memorial Healthcare. The Harris-Baldwin border policy puts Wisconsin families at risk. Two children stabbed to death, an illegal alien charged with their murder, a mother sexually assaulted, her daughter abused, a Venezuelan gang member here illegally charged. I think we're probably spending too much, uh, uh, throwing too much money on our southern border. Tammy Baldwin's wrong on the border, and Wisconsin families are paying the price. Restoration Pack is responsible for the content of this advertising. Wisconsin DOT contractors are clearing out the homeless encampment over on Rose Street. La Crosse police are keeping an eye on things as about 30 people leave the area around the Welcome to La Crosse statue across from Bridgeview Plaza. This summer, La Crosse's Common Council banned camping on city property, and that pushed a lot of the unhoused to this spot, which city officials say is actually state land. After being continually moved, the question emerges once again, where will the unhoused community go next? I'm just glad they're doing something about it, but I'm scared in the same sense because I don't know where they're going to go. Every neighborhood is at risk of having their garage broke into and stuff, and it's not okay. The DOT had given the people at the encampment a 30-day notice in September, citing safety concerns for both residents and drivers. As they clear that area, they say they're still trying to connect people with housing resources. A La Crosse nonprofit is temporarily closed after a car crashed into their building. Hope Restores is an organization focused on connecting the African American community with local services. The nonprofit announcing in a Facebook post that a car was allegedly drag racing struck a staff member's truck on Saturday, in turn causing damage to their building on Copeland Avenue. Hope Restores is now waiting on an inspection and damage assessment. Well, we'll have more news ahead. But first, Dry conditions continue. We've seen it. Not much rain the last couple weeks, and unfortunately, the forecast does look dry. But if you want to see another 80 degree, I got that in the forecast too. We'll break all that down with the details coming up on your first warm weather update after the break. Get an 11% rebate on everything in Menards. Shop our huge selection of Great Lakes Vinyl Plank Flooring. Monarch Vinyl Plank Flooring is durable, pet-friendly, and waterproof. Plus, it features a sound-reducing attached pad. Pick it up for just $3.39 a square foot after rebate. Check out our great selection of cabinets from Quality One. These ready-to-finish oak kitchen cabinets are ready to take home today. Get an 11% rebate on all Quality One cabinets. Save big money at Menards. I'm a nurse in Wisconsin, and my patients don't want politicians like Eric Hovde making their health care decisions. I am totally opposed to abortion. Hovde means what he says about opposing reproductive rights. Eric Hovde supported overturning Roe v. Wade, which led to an abortion ban in Wisconsin. And that's a ban with no exceptions for rape or incest. What Hovde supports criminalizes abortion and doctors like me. We need to vote against Eric Hovde. When Senate is responsible for the content of this ad. There are over 21,000 Wisconsin veterans struggling to pay for rent and utilities. Thank you for your service. Many are also facing issues with their mental health. Thank you for your service. 
We must do more to help these heroes who have already sacrificed so much. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Words simply aren't enough. I'm sorry. Make a difference by donating to this critical Wisconsin survival safety net today. Who's that Gary Van Orden think he is? He thinks he's better than us. Like that time he screamed at somebody, I don't give a f who you are. I'm a congressman. Language! Who does Derek Van Orden think he is supporting an abortion ban? I'm Rebecca Cook. Let me tell you who I am. I grew up on a dairy farm, run a small business, and I wait tables. Around here, we work hard, respect our neighbors' freedoms, and aren't looking for special treatment. We need one of us to represent us. And that's why I approve this message. To everyone who craves a fresh meal, come have a taste of Wisconsin. America's Dairyland. As in real dairy. It gives Culver's fresh frozen custard its famous rich and creamy flavor. Like really rich. So rich. Rich and creamy. And our cook to order butter burgers? They're topped with, you guessed it, Wisconsin cheese. But it's the smiles we put on your face with every meal made just for you. It really makes our hearts melt. From Wisconsin with love. Welcome to delicious. <laughs> Now, many areas did see some of the frost last night, which for most is kind of right on par to where we should be. If you look at the counties here in the orange, and that's when we first first week of October, we're kind of a little bit behind for some areas, but up to the north, we've already expe expected that early in last uh, September last week. So all in all, we're kind of past this where we should see the frost in some areas of the south are going to see it. So many areas may have not seen it yet, but it will be coming. Now, if you're looking at really freeze and we're talking 28 or below, most of the areas were still about another week away. Though once you get to the purple up to the north towards like Lady Smith, Russ County, they're probably ready to expect to see it this week. Probably will not. We've seen some areas down to Black River Falls, Sparta that have gotten down to 25, 26, but most areas you're still about a week away till the typical first day that we see the overnight low get below 28. So more to come, but we're not expecting to see any type of temperatures really once we get past tonight it's more going to be in the 40s to near 50 and that's your average temperatures right now should be in the low to mid 60s for most areas upper 30s to low 40s and we haven't seen many of these maybe like a day we get that and then we warm right back up behind a cold front so all in all we're still going to be above average throughout most of the week now there is a potential for some frost once again tonight chilly but maybe not so as we saw uh, coming into Monday morning Milder conditions, less wind, quiet Tuesday and Wednesday, more 70s than actually 60s. And then we could see some 80s as we get closer to Thursday and Friday, so more warm conditions. So we're talking potentially above 15 degrees, maybe even 20 degrees above average. So quite warm. But overnight lows, we're looking at the coldest spots getting back down to the 30s, low 40s for some of the warmer spots. But all in all, still kind of where we should be. Frost potential is out there for some little sheltered, more sheltered areas. Tomorrow, I think more areas will see the 70s, lighter northwest winds. We saw some breezy winds today. Should be lighter, so mid 60s to the north to the potential mid 70s far to the south. Wednesday, the winds get even lighter and kind of start turning around. So more areas will get to the mid 70s, potentially even getting close to 80. Plenty of sunshine, quiet conditions, dry conditions. Big picture shows you. Really, we kind of sometimes see a dip in the jet that goes through our area, and that's when we get a front. Turn the winds around to the northwest, we cool back down, last a couple days, and then we have a ridge to the west, begins to shift over, and we warm up. And we're going to see that once again through the week with another cold front potentially coming down through the weekend, and that will cool us back down. But in the meantime, we're going to see all this warm air to the west and south begin to pull back to the northeast. So we'll warm up through Friday with some more clouds, and then here comes the jet and the cold front that will come through potentially by Saturday, and that will cool us cool us back down for sun, uh, Saturday going into Sunday, which means we'll be back to probably in the upper 50s to low 60s, so where we should be. So once again, Saturday warmer, Sunday cooler. Now precipitation with that front coming through, there's an outside shot. Some areas maybe to the north can get, we're talking like a one-th, maybe tenth of an inch potentially with that to the north. All in all, it's a dry forecast. Minus through this forecast, we go beyond, it's still going to be dry. But that's about the only potential, and that would be about Saturday night to see maybe that chance of some light showers far north. But overall, the forecast is dry and mild, and you see that drop in temperatures come Sunday behind the cold front that will get us back down to where we should be. Low 60s here, more upper 50s to the north, and then we're going to start kind of warming right back up next week and kind of repeat this pattern. The only thing you don't see in any of this forecast, and this goes beyond uh, this forecast, mm -hmm. is dry conditions. It looks like it may be 
by October 20th, maybe right. we get a pattern change, but it, it's still, it's a dry forecast. October is going to be ending up to be a dry month if we continue this pattern. So. Yeah, sure mm -hmm. looks like it. Yep. All right, Greg, thanks mm -hmm. very much. Coming up next in sports, state bound area golfers looking to go low at sectionals this morning. We'll find out who will be teeing off one week from now over at University Ridge in Madtown. Jacob is up next. Proper installation of your new windows make a difference. The team at Clear Choice Window and Home Solutions are factory trained to make sure your windows are installed to last. Call or stop into the showroom for your free estimate. I've met so many people in western Wisconsin looking for a change. We need fresh ideas to tackle the issues families are facing every day. Inflation, health care costs, tax relief. In November, vote for someone putting in the legwork to find solutions. Vote Ryan Hipsch for assembly. Career politician Tammy Baldwin doesn't share our Wisconsin values. Baldwin's life partner is a Wall Street executive who has invested in industries that Tammy oversees in Washington. But Senator Baldwin refuses to disclose her partner's financial assets. That's a conflict of interest. They're getting richer while you're paying more. Tammy Baldwin's not on your side. She's in bed with Wall Street. I'm Eric Covdy and I approve this message. Join the team and give today. At Spectrum, we believe every day unlocks unlimited possibilities to bring you closer to the people and places you love. Spectrum transforms your gaming experience into a galaxy of adventures. And with the fastest, most reliable internet, you're always front row to the entertainment you love, no matter where you are. Get Spectrum Internet Premier for $30 per month when bundled plus a three-year price guarantee. Call 1-833-440-0029. Spectrum Internet puts streaming live TV, sports, and popular apps all at your fingertips. Kamala Harris is going to significantly raise taxes. Taxes are going to have to go up? Kamala's plan will raise families' taxes by nearly $2,600 a year. Under Kamala, prices have already soared. Now she'd make it worse with even higher taxes. Taxes are going to have to go up? President Trump will cut taxes again. No taxes on tips, overtime, or Social Security. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Steve Doyle says, I'm working for you. Unless, of course, you're a senior on fixed income or middle class family. Steve Doyle voted against bipartisan tax relief to help you with rising costs. Steve Doyle, playing political games, not working for us. Bring all of the exciting action from your community. Here's News 8 Now Sports. Well, there was a trip to the state tournament on the line this morning in Toma for girls golf. Top two teams advance and top three individuals not on those teams move on as well. A tough field at Hiawatha Golf Club coming in first place in the team standings. The Prescott Cardinals who have won the last four state titles. And in second place, the Hudson Raiders squeaked by Toma by just two strokes. Hudson freshman Ava Swavely finishes second. Individually, Sarah Chaffee of Chippewa Falls McDonald wins with a 77, and Holman's Jayana Palm will advance. She finishes tied for fourth, but trailed golfers from Hudson and Prescott, so her season will continue. But it is the end of the road for the Hasselberger sisters, just barely. Karma finishes one stroke behind Carolyn Skinner of Altoona Regis with an 83 for that last spot and Cadence shoots an 84. Elsewhere on the leaderboard, Sydney Cranig was the top finisher for Onalaska, finishing her round with a 91. And a bunch of our Division II golfers were in Cottage Grove, where Aquinas would also just miss out on state by three strokes. Now, Tennyson Makepeace did qualify individually for the Blue Golds as she took second place on the day with an 84. Her teammate Emma Dobbins just barely misses the cut with an or finishing in 11th place, and Maddie Fletcher of West Beaveroqua also had a good day finishing in 13th. And while we are fully immersed in the fall sports season, we are getting closer and closer to winter, so that means Badger basketball is on the horizon. And today was media day in Madison, and with the departure of AJ Store, Tyler Wall, and Chucky Hepburn, things will look different. But Stephen Crowell is back for one final go around. He says he needs to be offensively aggressive. I'm trying to be more aggressive and just changing my mindset a little bit about just I think the team is better when I'm aggressive and the coaches know that and the players are on me about that so um, just starting in practice trying to do that every day and uh, transfer it to a game because it's not just a switch you can flip when you get to a game it starts now so just trying to do that every day and uh, just trying to bring that mindset every day.
Yeah, kind of weird to be talking about college basketball with MLB playoffs uh, happening right now in There's football a lot going as well. On right but now. it's going to be interesting to see how that team does this year. Yeah, that is losing a lot of star power in yeah. one year. And Stephen Crowell is not the offensive mastermind of past years. Who knows? Maybe they'll surprise some people. We'll see. Fingers but it crossed. was a great, a great weekend of football. So many great games in mm -hmm. college and the NFL. Absolutely. Oh, you watched some as oh, well. Oh, yeah, I watched of some. Of course. And fun. we got an NBA preseason going on, too. A lot so of stuff. Lot it's of a stuff. converging of sports yes. right now. Yes. All and right. you're going for who in Pickham today? Uh, I think Chiefs? the Saints. Saints yeah, you guys Saints. are both going the Saints, and I'm going with uh, the Chiefs. So, so she's we'll probably going to win. I might win. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, we'll have another look at your forecast right after this. Is your vehicle loan taking you for a ride? Get behind the wheel and take the road less expensive with Ultra's competitive vehicle loan options. With knowledgeable loan professionals, an easy application, and no payments for 90 days, Ultra's here to pave the way for a smoother road ahead. Apply today at drivealtra.org, then lean back and enjoy the ride. Ultra Federal Credit Union, helping you live your best life, one mile at a time. Every day we battle illegal drugs coming into our community. And we know the attacks on Tammy Baldwin are not true. Tammy's working with law enforcement to stop the flow of fentanyl. She brought Democrats and Republicans together to crack down on drugs coming from China and Mexico, giving us more tools to fight drug smugglers. And Tammy voted 32 times to strengthen the border. Don't believe the attacks. It's Tammy Baldwin I trust to keep Wisconsin safe. I'm Tammy Baldwin, and I approve this message. Kamala Harris is going to significantly raise taxes. Taxes are going to have to go up? Kamala's plan will raise families' taxes by nearly $2,600 a year. Under Kamala, prices have already soared. Now she'd make it worse with even higher taxes. Taxes are going to have to go up? President Trump will cut taxes again. No taxes on tips, overtime, or Social Security. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Fentanyl is one of the most lethal drugs on the market. This much can kill thousands. These deadly drugs are pouring across our border. But Biden, Harris, and Democrats have done nothing to stop it. Tammy Baldwin claims she's trying, but she's failed. She took credit for an anti-fentanyl bill she didn't write and opposed efforts to secure the border. Senator Baldwin and Democrats have done nothing, and our communities are paying the price. I'm Eric Hovde. I approve this message. All right, more mild to warm conditions with, yes, that is correct, 80s coming back for Friday. Mm. So It's yeah. like week one of the football season. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We'll see you at 10.